Hello there lovely people, it's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today I'm going to give you just five reasons why you should absolutely be downloading the second DLC pack for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now, whilst this video does not contain any story spoilers for the DLC or the standard game, there are some features in here that are part of the DLC, and so if you don't want to know about them, you shouldn't be on this video. Still with me? Lovely. Let's have a look. New gear for horses. Yes, now I know it sounds like a very lame thing to start off with, but bear with me, it really is worth it. Not only does the new bridle allow you to have two extra spurs on any horse that you put it on, but also the brand new saddle will allow you to call your horse anywhere anytime. With this equipped on your horse, when you whistle, instead of the horse just trying to get to you using its feet like some sort of prehistoric nonsense, it will just teleport to you in the most stylish manner possible. This is honestly one of the most useful bits of the DLC in my opinion, simply because it allows you to just call your horse whenever you like. You don't have to go to a stable, you don't have to fast travel before you can get your horse or anything like that. You just press D down and boom, it's there. But thankfully, that's not the only reason to get the DLC which should be fairly obvious because I said there were five reasons. <laughs> Yes, we all expected to get some new shrines, but there was still a niggling doubt at the back of my mind saying, did Nintendo actually confirm there were going to be new shrines, or are you just hoping? Thankfully, we don't have to worry because there is a delicious new array of wonderful, wonderful shrines for you to encounter. Not all of them contain spirit orbs, though. There are some of them that are purely there to progress the plot of the main DLC plot. But these are without a doubt some of the best, some of the most challenging, and some of the most creative shrines that we've seen to date. There's one that's all about melting things, there's one that's like a giant Rube Goldberg machine. Honestly, it's just wonderful. Clearly they just let themselves go, you know what, difficulty isn't a problem anymore, let's make these things tough, and let's make them brilliant. Yes, there is a brand new Divine Beast as well. I was a little bit worried after I did all the shrines and everything that there wasn't going to be anything else, but then all of a sudden, a new Divine Beast appeared, and oh lordy lordy, it's probably one of the most interesting. You're probably wondering to yourself, why is this video all blurry all of a sudden? Well, don't worry, I've done that on purpose because I don't want to spoil anything about this new Divine Beast. Except maybe this corner. Nice. Much like the shrines, it's more challenging, more ingenious, and uses a lot of new mechanics that haven't really been employed in any of the previous Divine Beasts or even shrines. Yes, just in case they weren't overpowered enough, you can now reduce the recharge time of all four champion abilities. It's a little bit token, but it is really rewarding and really satisfying to be able to use Daruk's protection pretty much whenever you want. Of course, if you're the hardcore type, you can still always turn these off in the inventory. And last but not least, there have been 300 new Koroks. Don't worry, it's not really true. But what is true is that there's a motorbike in the game now. This was a concept that the developers played around with ages and ages ago during Breath of the Wild's development, and we pretty much just assumed it was never going to happen. But how wrong can we be? The Master Cycle Zero runs on materials and goes like the clappers. It is faster than any horse imaginable, only thing is it doesn't actually stick to paths, so you can go into trees. So don't throw your horse away just yet. Actually, it's fine, throw your horse away, this thing's amazing. It's so ridiculous, it's so out of place, and it's so unnecessary. But does this look like a face that cares? Because in The Legend of Zelda, we are able to ride a motorbike. It's so out of left field, but I love it so, so much. And of course, it is entirely optional, so if you don't like it, you don't have to use it. Whoa, well, those are the five reasons that I said I'd give you. Have I convinced you? Then please let me know down there in the comments. I'm, I'm, I hope I have because there's a motorbike in it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you drive that subscribe button like a motorbike all around Hyrule Field and be sure to check out nintendolife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Oh,